You think you know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was? Before I was me, I was you. you. Man score, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yeah. TYBB, get your balls back. WWWWWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, we got a special show today with a special guest, but first and foremost, Harry, how are you doing out in Cali? Oh Living my God. Ooh. Getting the sunshine, but still trying to keep these gators down. It's even harder yeah. in the sun. You know I that? Know. I know. It's, it's, it's see, time. Harry, I, it, Andre, Harry's a little cocky since he lost 40 pounds. You ever notice that? What are you talking hey. about? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh oh, Come on. flexing on him. I gotta get a tan on that though. <laughs> you you ain't Cali. How you don't have a tan? Anyway, whatever. Andre's having a hot oil treatment. He's trying to you get his luxurious. I want to introduce my guest so we can. I get wish I could stuff. give Andre a hot oil treatment with fry oil, just right <laughs> out of the right How out of the McDonald's. Shut up! Grill. Stop imagining me with oil on me, you freak! Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I want to give Andre a hot grits. Uh, <laughs> I want to give him a, <laughs> a hot motor oil treatment. <laughs> yep. Keep look, telling people how you want to treat my body, you freak. Shut up. Sh- shut up. All right, look, <laughs> let's get into my guest. My guest. Uh, I want. I mean, this is gonna be a great intro because yeah. I don't know. I don't know if she knows uh, how many times I've talked about her on the podcast. Um, really, uh, I, I can. Cons- we don't hang out a lot, but I consider her a really good friend. I love her to death. Probably one of the funniest people I know. And uh, bar bar nobody, and I've I want you to know. Well, let me introduce and I'll get into it. Uh, Comedy Central specials, let, let all kinds of shit she's done. Uh, the give it up for show. Jess- tonight's show, Jessica Kirsten. Give it up for Yay. Jessica Kirsten. Thank you guys. Now, I'm Jessica, so I w- here. I want you to know, and and I and Andre and uh, fucking uh, Harry. What's your name, dude? How many times have I said, talked about Jessica on the podcast? Oh 400 episodes. Absolutely. Uh, maybe 350 times I've mentioned Jessica, yeah. right? You always oh, mention her when you mention the killers. When I mention the killers, and I always talk about how, you know, and people would say, sometimes you hear idiots and they'd be like, women ain't funny. I was like, you, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I said because I've seen, I've been backstage when when Jessica's getting ready to go up, and and the dudes, uh, they're trying to find a reason. Swap why. spots. Swatch uh, out. Hey man. Yeah. yeah, yeah hey, uh, uh, oh, I gotta she, get down to the east side. Oh, so they I gotta. Like, oh, they go. Oh, she makes faces. She really. That's here's. I watched Jessica smoke the room. For easily, how long have you been doing it, Jess? I'm in my 21st year. Well, I've watched I've your, known you I, 20 years. I've known yes. you a really long time. I know. It's been a, mm-hmm. So, um, <laughs> and Je- I, wa- I watched Jessica smoke dudes. I've watched the fear in people's eyes knowing they get ready to follow. And I'm, I'm not bullshitting, Jess. You know I'm, I don't, no, you know, I, I don't. I, I, I it's so funny. It's like, 
I feel bad, but then it's it's <laughs> like some of the clubs. I'm like, you have fucking millions of dollars. I'm not taking it down a notch so you feel more comfortable. No, for, not for at all. Dollars, I'm not doing it. And I did that for a long time. I would really do as well. Yeah, because I because people would you know some men and not a lot and women. No, a lot of men, a lot of men. Stop. I mean, you're being conservative. I, I'm, I've well, watched the fear in people's eyes following you. I've well, watched you know, it. A lot of them will do it even if, you know, they'll be like, fuck, I don't want to follow that. But some people will say shit. Like I was at the cellar, I don't know, maybe a year ago when I did comedy. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> someone was getting off stage and I was going on at the underground. And, he, and I mean, I, I um, got off stage and he was about to go on and the MC went up and he's like, Jesus, save some, save some for the rest of us, save right, some right. meat for the rest of us. And I said, find more meat. Right. Yeah. Well, so I mean, you, you know, I, I don't really, I don't really take that as a, as a, as a, a knock because what they're basically saying is they, they are acknowledging that you're a beast. And, and I, I talk about this all the time, how there's uh you know, there's, there's what, in, in, especially in the New York scene, I don't know about LA so much, but there's a situation where there's certain um, comics that we call closers mm -hmm. that close the show out. There's, uh, you know, and, and there's not a lot, like maybe eight, maybe you could, if you had to rattle them off, um, so. about eight, eight ten, right? Yeah. That'll that are that'll mostly kill, yeah. And just kill and and yeah. then last on the show every time they the only I'm, way you get it Yeah. I'm go thinking ahead. about go. it like it's Greer, it's Godfrey, like there's names that are Greer, coming, Godfrey, like, yeah, yeah it's the guys that go last mm -hmm. all the time over and over. And even even look, I, I ain't gonna lie, when you know, when I gotta follow Jess, like I you know, I'm not really afraid of nobody. But I I gotta crack my neck. I gotta stretch my hamstrings out a little bit. Just know that it's like, like you can't go in there half assing at all. So I I want you to know I've said that on the, I mentioned you specifically your name about you gotta see her. At, you know anytime somebody's ever said women are not funny or some stupid shit, I like yo you go check her out and you you gonna see you'll be surprised. I remember I got phone calls when you did Patrice O'Neill's. Um, yeah, that was an amazing show. Oh my god! First thing I heard was they was like Jessica m murdered, and all the all the staples. So if you really want to know who I'm talking about, just go and look at the, the flyer. <laughs> the the flyer, flyer, flyer of who. Yeah, it was insane. I was nervous because it was all killers. But you know what? From that show is how I got Bill Burr saw me and called me and told me he wanted to produce my special because that was like an unbelievable set. Yeah, I, and I just want to say this never happened to me. But that was the one set where I literally it was I don't know how many people, maybe two thousand. I can't remember what the theater was like, but yeah, yeah. the applause was so crazy that I actually remember standing on stage after I did my my act and saying, "Jessica, just stand here for a minute and take it in." Right, right, I right. Do that I always run off. I'm like, no, I don't, I don't deserve it. Yeah, I'm yeah. So uncomfortable, and I remember consciously saying, "Stand here for a second and take in what you just did because you worked your." ass off for 20 years like allow yourself to take it in and i did yeah, enjoy it, it yeah I, and i i mean i think and i would say you know like and you like i've said i've i've mentioned your name because you know i don't i don't pull no i've never been known to pull no punches which is probably why i don't have a career but <laughs> the uh <laughs> but uh you know it's it was just it's just the first thing i heard was like yo jessica set the place it was like ground zero crazy. uh smoke and, and 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 you know i mean i don't i don't know i, I don't i don't i don't i wasn't there because i've never been invited even though patrice and i were best friends but that's weird <laughs> um but but uh you know it was like i was like of course of course and 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 i you know it's interesting <laughs> You even said that it was one. It was a really great set. Wow. But I've seen, I've seen you do that. I've seen. If, I, I literally can say I've seen you do that. Just murder the room, decimate the room. Ease uh, like over a hundred times. Like in fact, I, I can't remember where you didn't murder like that. So it's. Uh, it, I just want to say that it's where where I so pain. It's say really, that again. I'm in so much pain. Yeah. I really <laughs> am. It'll never go away. And I think now. I haven't been on stage in three months, but I have this weird feeling that I'm just going to like 
go up with no material and be able to do great. Fucking crush. I'm so yeah. fucking angry yeah. and upset that I don't even have material. I'm just yeah. going to talk. Yeah. Well, I, I, in, in the last, go ahead, Harry. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say it's interesting because not only, uh, first of all, not only a great comedian, but a, a sweetheart too, just a yeah. nice person yeah. and always nice to even the young and up and comers who aren't in that yep. world. You're I always been very nice that. and sweet. The, the couple yeah. times I've gotten to work with Jessica is, is always phenomenal. But also I remember the one time we were, we were at some casino or something that was pretty rough. That was a fun one. Um, where uh, it, it got nuts. It was just a lot of this. The Empire, remember the Empire, Dante? That one. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. Oh, it was ruffling that. That's that where was it was. Night. Oh, you did the Empire. Oh, really? I did the Empire with Jessica, and uh, I remember it was rougher than when I when we. Did it wasn't it. rougher. I'm saying it was like it was the same thing. It was just rough. Yeah, it was we just had, rough. We and had the, three people when I, me and Harry, did it before. We did it together. Three people got arrested during my show. Oh <laughs> my! Why? I've never um, even heard that. They, uh, we were. I was on stage, and then I could see the 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 security come in, and these dudes was drinking, and it was like, uh, uh, um, it was like, like some Latino dudes, and um, and they came in, and then they, they was they came and whispered to the dude, and he went over to show them my ID. And next thing you know, they was they had his hands behind his back, they was cuffing him. Then they came back again, and they picked up two more guys. Right from a Dude. from another crew or something that gone on in the casino or something, and it was like, um, and I was like, it's funny because we're all everybody, you know, it's all it, it's all Black Lives Matter now, right? Mm -hmm. Two months ago, there was no you could if you said Black Lives Matter, you you had an argument, you know. Two months? You mean a month? Maybe? Yeah, maybe yeah, a month. Yeah. I, I, now it's. You know, I know, I was so, so avant-garde, like, this is the cool thing to do. Um, huh. And I, I was like, I said this, I said, it was, inter it was just, it's like, if you was a, if you were a rapper and you came out gay uh, five years ago, mm -hmm. your career was over, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, if you come out gay, your career goes through the roof. You know, so it's easy to do this when everybody's done the work, you know, and, and I and I say this like growing up hip hop, uh, um, I was homophobic by by the programming, you of know? Course. Yeah, and, I and was you, too when I grew up. Yeah. Right. And you you and so you had to kind of open your mouth. You, you, you had to open your brain up and kind of, you know, like and, and, and have the empathy to see what and to see what you were doing and to kind of have that growth, you know. And it's an interesting thing now that the same thing has happened with this Black Lives Matter movement, where it's a thing where, you know, I um I had a guy I used to do a joke. I used to do a joke about how a guy guy that I worked with in the phone company, he said to me, he said to me, oh, you know, they shouldn't have uh, gays in the, in, the, in the Cub Scouts because, you know, they're fucking the kids. And I was like, do you really, do you understand that you're equating pedophilia with, with same-sex relationships? I go, I, I, do you realize how dumb that is, right? And then I started, the, the joke is that I start rattling off you know, because in order to, to kind of have the empathy, you got to know what you're talking about. So I'm talking about, you know, that that uh, Lincoln was was gay. Um, President Lincoln was gay. And that I talk about the Stonewall and I'm rattling off all of these, the, you know, the historical facts of the, the that gays fought on both sides of the Civil War and gays fought in in the armed forces and don't ask, don't tell and and Harvey Milk fought in the Stonewall and that, and I'm rattling it off and then I go the, the, I go uh, and now now because this guy's an idiot, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm I, I'm gay and I have a life partner and we <laughs> antique in Berkeley, you know, what I mean? like because of the <laughs> fact that they're so stupid, you know? Yeah. So, it's in. It's an interesting thing. Even with the pod, you know, even the podcast initially with the podcast, we it was the podcast is Man School Two Hundred Two, and then I had you know, um, gay and lesbian people that came on, and we had them and and trans people that came on and talked about their relationships, and I had to readjust what my models were because I realized. And, and 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 you can disagree or agree. I'd like to your feedback. That it's not so much masculine and feminine; it's dominant and submissive. Yes. Do you know what I mean? And it, it and it, 
you know, we, you, we would call it masculine and feminine, but, it, but that's in every relationship. Yes, it is. I, 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 and I, I completely feel that in my relationship. Right. It's not, it's, it's more of a dynamic. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not masculine and feminine. In fact, it seems like, you know, honestly, most masculine guys are attracted to other masculine guys. Like it's, it's, it's so much broader than people think it is. Right. Right. More fluid. Yeah. A lot of like very feminine men sometimes have a hard time meeting someone because mm. more gay men are attracted to, in my opinion, um, more of a guy's guy. That's what I see in my life and my friends and stuff. And in yeah, my but, relationship, we're well, both he, but would you say that they're people. more masculine? Like, if even if it's a masculine guy, he wants a guy who's if he's the submissive, then he's or he's the bottom, then he wants a guy who's more masculine than than yes, him. But it's not like someone who's like, "Hello," and then right, right. over here. Like, it's yeah, not like that. Right. It's not yeah. so clear. It, it's a subtle. It's a nuance. It's very subtle. It's yeah. more of an in bed kind of thing, in my opinion. Right. It is. Like yeah, but doesn't that women, th really butchy women? Yeah, are bottoms. Like I'm talking butchy women are normally not always the right. bottom in the relationship with a really femme woman. Really? Oh yeah, they want to be controlled. And uh, well, yeah. you know that's interesting because even in heterosexual sexual relationships, you'll get guys who are who you know a lot of dudes, a lot of straight dudes, they'll be getting pegged in their yeah. relationship. And because they're so aggressive and so overly aggressive, a lot of times in a, in a, I think in a fraudulent way more so, it's almost like they're forced into that, that, that kind of mode. Do you think it's fraudulent like or at times, or, something? or sometimes, yeah, yeah. I, I what think it is psychologically, sometimes people who are very strong and assertive in their life and careers yeah. like to be submissive in the bedroom at times. That's a huge thing especially when you go into like the extreme world of like BDSM and stuff, it's yeah, almost always that. Cool. Shout out to Harry. Well, it's um, not here nor there. <laughs> you don't have to. I mean, you know. yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm not here for a long time. I'm just here for a good time. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know. That's true what he said. Huh? And I, I get that. I have that a little, I like the, the woman on my side, the arm candy. I'm very male right. in a lot of ways. Yeah, so yeah. I and let me, let me tell you something. Women. I've seen Jessica with the cuties, the hotties. Uh, 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 Look at Andre. He's straight like, uh, uh, straight yeah. bag in the hotties. Hey, like, yeah. <laughs> no, no. So, but it, it's, um, I don't think, like Harry, you said it's, it's fraudulent, but it is fraudulent because you're forced into that because of your work or your job. So it's the, you. Hmm. It's almost like this. So when you when you know sexually, you're you're naked, not just physically naked, but you're emotionally naked. Right. And so your true self is who you are sexually. See, but I I I don't know. It's just interesting because I don't know that they're necessarily being fraudulent. By they are happy career wise for it to be like. No, they're not. In no, they're not. You, you do what not. you. No, you look. Anytime I've had a, a super. M masculine woman, like a very corporate woman that I dated. Right. Super submissive. Like, right. su because, you know, you're talking about the sexism in, 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 in corporate America. And so she, she understands that she has to be hard. Otherwise she's going to get run. You know, if she's not hard, she's going to get run over. And so even if she is, you know, uh, like type A personality, she's going to be super type A because the sexism is so that she she's always pushing back because yeah. the minute she doesn't push back. I, I mean, I encounter that, that all the time. The same thing is a woman is very, yeah, she's very uh, headstrong, which I like, is very headstrong, independent, and in control in her life, and then but submissive I'm not, I'm in not, the bedroom. But I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that the eight, you know, in, in a job situation, in a in a employment situation, that's she not has a natural. Yeah, that's not it a natural. That's not a natural. I mean, you're trying to make money. You're you're trying yeah. to stay relevant. It's not so when you when you're home is when the, that's when the true self. You agree with or you disagree, Jess? I think for the most part, I I think I do think a lot of women. You have to be like that in business. Sure. I, I'm I'm like that when it comes to the entertainment business, and and when I. You know, that, that's exactly what happened to me when I, De Niro, it doesn't matter. I'm not saying it to, to look cool. It's just yeah. what happened. I was at the cellar. No. De Niro was there, and he, he loved my act and called me, and I ended up 
being a producer in a movie. It was crazy. And I wasn't oh, prepared nice. for any of it because I felt like uh, like this, oh, whatever you say, like from being in this business for so long and feeling like I didn't have a right to say anything. And he was paying me, so I had to speak up and just do what he said. And I had to deal with all these men trying to be like, shut the fuck up. And the director, like, we don't want your input. But De Niro was the one that hired me. And yeah. I was there. And I was like, fuck this. So I, I became so masculine. Like, I had to, to, right. to deal with these Hollywood fucking horrible people. And normally, I'm not like that. Right, right, right. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying she's not because she is always kind of the top anyway, but not to that extent. You you yeah. got it. You because it's business. Mm. So it's not yes, a natural. That is, that's true. That did Fair happen. enough. Yeah, it's Fair not enough. a natural. Cause so if you're if you imagine if you're really submissive and then you're in business, now you have the difference between what you are and what you have to be is so vast that it's like when you you get in the bed, you're like, oh, this is I've I've been putting on this mask for so long that I wanna that I really want and and honestly, I mean, let's be honest, it's, it's I mean, especially in the comedy community, it's a bunch of punks, it's a bunch of punk, the dudes, a bunch of yeah. punks, and so and now they're you know they, it's well, this. You ever hear that that saying that um, under if you take off enough makeup off an actor underneath, you'll find an actress. <laughs> yeah, well, I've, heard, I've never heard that. Yeah, I think Ed Norton said that. that. Yeah. yeah, if you peel away the makeup, there's an actress underneath. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's guys it's are just... self conscious. There, it's a business oh, yeah. of self conscious. The ones that are sure. the most con- this, the ones that are the most aware, even if they are um, like hard on themselves, they hate themselves, they're insecure. Yeah. If they're even if they're aware of it, they're they're not threatened by me as much. It's the ones that are pretend like they're hot shit. And they're not hate themselves, and they're not even aware of what's going on. Oh, like the fake bad boy type of dude. Yeah, oh, yeah. They're, yeah. they're everywhere. There are no yeah. bad boys in comedy. Can we stop? It's not a tough. There's no reason to be tough. There's not like yeah. There's the just a handful, are maybe the most vulnerable. Period. You're telling, you're telling dick jokes. It's not. Yeah. You don't got to be tough. You know, yeah. I mean? there's no it's gang tough, fights. Not fun. I don't know why people want to be. It's it's not a fun game. It's not fun. The tough game fun. is not a fun game. That shit painful. Yeah, it, it's not. It's, 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 not it's fun. never a good time ever. I, like, admit, I, I no, know t- like actual work. tough niggas. They are never having a great time. It's not fun. No, you can't yeah. hurt. You can't eat soft serve ice cream. Too <laughs> <laughs> much work. It's too much work, yeah. bro. It sounds like a lot of work to have to. Yeah, always go work. look at some flowers or something. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you can't, <laughs> you can't, you can't, but you know, I was like, my, 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 my wife, my wife, um, but I mean, any being fake on any level is exhausting. I watch, like I'll watch Ru- RuPaul's Drag Race. My wife watches it constantly. And I'm like, this is exhausting. Like, this yeah, is, that's a fact. What happened to Andre? What no, I said, no, that's true. It's true. No, I thought you fell off the fucking. No, no, no. I got like a a little setup for my yeah. my, my phone. So. If you watch okay. the video of this, by the way, the whole episode's available on YouTube. You can see, I guess you put it in front of a can or something, and then the light shining up. I don't know what you're doing. Listen, like can you of sound sound I don't know. Andre, you're fucking funny. Just just there. I can't even explain it. <laughs> He's out of his mind. He's out of his mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like every time someone says something, he drops out of the frame, and you're like, <laughs> dead. Like that's all I fucking need is to do a yeah, podcast. But, but Jessica, I have you, the comics die in front of me on the screen. Oh that's shit! Scary on this Sunday. When you say that, let's not get it twisted. You're laughing at him, not with him, because he's no. He's, a he knows I'm laughing. It's he's just funny. Like he's just funny. Harry, you're hating, hating, buddy. Look at you. Naked. I'm hating the way you frame the shot. That's what I'm hating, Andre. You got a can of peas that you're using as a camera Here's a funny, fan. The, COVID, the COVID, like Andre, Yo, like, not- is, he's such a tough guy, right? But Andre legitimately, when the COVID hit, he legitimately was like, he came home Shut with up. sniffles. What you said, legitimately? And Andre, you, you, no, I said he legitimately <laughs> was was stuck in the basement like yeah. his mom like him and his girlfriend came home they had the sniffles and his mom locked them in the basement how many yep. weeks how many weeks uh, was it bef- it was 12 days at least 12 days but well, i'm, but I'm days. saying 
like not he didn't even like go in the backyard like not on the steps like he was in the basement locked in the basement they were sliding the oxtail underneath the door and then they were cutting the oxtail real thin so you could slide it under the cracker like he was locked dummy I, oxtail I, <laughs> dummy <laughs> oxtail is hilarious <laughs> <laughs> oh my like, god! I love the idea of Delhi oxtail. Right? I had to bring on. Yeah. I brought Andre some weed, and <laughs> and his mom came out and got it, and he just waved at me from the from the window, like, "Hey!" I just in the basement window. He was just. <laughs> she got the weed for him. <laughs> no, I'm exaggerating, but he, you know, he he, he, he he was he was locked down, like locked yeah. down. So he was losing his mind. He's scared. Of, you know, he's scared of germs. He's a pussy. Woo! Scared of germs. Thought I had it. Yeah, he, so he. You did have it? No, but I thought oh. I did. Did you get like tested? Two nights. Nah. So you had it, stupid. That's why that I joke. never had any <laughs> symptoms. All I did was freak the fuck out. Yeah, a lot of people have that. It's, it's like literally, I never coughed. I ain't wheeze. I ain't do shit. And you was just locked in the basement for. F- I freaked out. Here's we would do. Weird. Yes, we like, would That's do. It, nigga, we got it, son. And I was <laughs> we he he would we would be doing Zoom and he would just be changing different do rags like while we were doing it. Was just an idiot. <laughs> was fucking idiot. But it was a good did. time though. Uh, it was a good time. It was yes, a good time. Sometimes it wasn't. Sometimes it wasn't. Like Harry you was sound negative. Harry, <laughs> Harry was biting his lip cause, just because you know Harry's like, oh, the production is this is well, I like it to look as nice as possible. I gave up on Andre a long time ago. I was like, mm-hmm. can you do it by a curtain? He goes, I got you, and then he's just by a wall of broken records and books. <laughs> yeah, but I think. But now crazy. look at this beautiful bag. Yo, y'all better stop talking over Jessica. I mean, <laughs> this y'all are talking over Jessica. The fuck is wrong with y'all? Yeah, we have four hundred episodes. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? I Dante, actually like this guest. You can't swim with me, bro. <laughs> I'm not there. I ain't hey, scared Audrey, of you. Why didn't you chime in last like week when we needed guest. you? What you gonna do? Hit me? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so this tough is... from far away. Oh, that's so good. You can talk shit now, and you don't even yeah. have to get into a fight. What you gonna I, do, buddy? Good. Yeah, because you don't want to get the virus. I'm going to travel in a group of <laughs> 10 niggas, so just in case you show up, that's 11, and now it's illegal. Oh, boy. All oh right, boy. Drake. Anyhow. Uh, all right, stop all right. talking over Jessica. I want to hear her. I'm tired of hearing you idiots. Well, I wanted to say something. One of the things I was talking about back in the day when I did that gig, I remember talking to her before the show and Jessica talking about wanting to do more stuff about her personal life because yeah. up until that point, she really didn't delve into, like, the reality of it. I know that was oh, at yeah, that yeah. point that was something you were kind of wrestling with. Is that uh, and now you're more open to it? How, what was well, that like? I didn't want to be seen as a lesbian comic because first of all, I've been with men, and it's not like I'm not a, like I I can't just classify myself as a lesbian. I've been with a lot of guys, and so is my wife. You know what I'm saying? How long, so, how long ago was that? I wish I'd have known. <laughs> if you no, was cut off date. Point where I may switch things up. I am really. <laughs> <laughs> So look, if you do, holla at me. <laughs> this, this virus is gonna make you me suck a <laughs> Um, no, I, that's true. I didn't want to be labeled, and I yeah. also, and I would be seen as a lesbian. Con- I mean, look what's happened. That's why it took so long yeah. for Wanda to talk about it, and yeah. everyone, Sandra Bernhard, Margaret Cho. I mean, it's Ellen. It's 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 hard, and it would be harder for men. That's why, like, people like Ian Fidance, people that talk about being women, I mean, that is, it's much harder for men. I can say that. But well, I, you know what? I, I kind of feel like. Um, now, maybe not, but it was for a long time. Well, let me ask you this, because he has, a, <clears throat> um, when you think about, like, a lot of times as comics, we have these things that we worry about, you know, that are really not an issue. Do you know what I mean? Like no, I, I think remember- it's more about me. Yeah. yeah it yeah. is my issue. I've always I've been saying that a lot recently. It's more my my own self hatred and yeah. internal homophobia. No one's ever well, ever I, said I anything. Said anything. Right. It's not. You've never had you've never got any heat from it personally. I'm no, about. people don't care. They don't yeah. give a shit. They love me for who I am. You know, and it's and it happens to me on stage. Like I'll say something and then I'll go, Oh my god, people aren't gonna accept me. People are gonna judge me. Even people- now. 
Even yeah. now you get that. Yeah. yeah. I'm working on it, but it's tough. It's well, I, I know it's odd because even at the time I was like, who would, who, who would be bothered by that? Like, you should definitely talk about all that stuff. That would be amazing. I, yeah, but you're talking I, about I, you, Harry. Right. But I, I'm saying I think that gets ingrained <laughs> in you. And yeah. so, like, you're just so used to living in that world that you're still afraid to, to come, come out figuratively and literally as far as the material goes because you just build that up inside you. That's how you live your life. So it takes a long time for people to kind of be okay, even though maybe it would have been fine five years ago. Nobody would have been offended well, by I it. Well, I did but, a lot of shows for gay audiences and yeah. it was very open. I just didn't do it in New Mainstream. York. And it was smart because I actually ended up doing The Tonight Show a bunch of times and other things where I don't think at the time when I did them, I could have done gay material or they wouldn't have hired me. It was more because of, right. you know, I, it w if, if that's what it was, it, it, it wouldn't, I wouldn't have gotten it twice, like 10 years ago. It, right. Trust me. There's yeah. no way. Um, and now that I have kids, I feel like it's my duty right. to talk about it. Like, I don't want them to ever feel like it's bad or shameful or something's wrong with them. You know, right. I, that's really why I talk about it now. Right. It's, it's kind of interesting because the, you know, like I've always approached, um, well, I mean, I, I started late though. You know, I started doing comedy late. So I had a whole life before I started. I think I started, I was 34. I was married. I was with my first wife. And, you know, I, I was raising, raising a stepdaughter. So I just, I had already, I didn't have, I didn't have any fucks left to give anyway. So for me, and I, and I, and I just, and, and you, you know, I'm 20 years and you're 21, but I remember just feeling like, I'm just not going to, I'm not going to apologize for me. I, I, I mean, I. That's the best way to be in this. Business. I mean, I was a, I was a pimp for yeah. a while. And, and I talk about it because not because I'm proud of it. I mean, I, I mean, we all have those moments where you think back and you go, man, I, you know, but, but to, to hide it, you give people the opportunity to have leverage on your life because right. you're living this, not living a lie, but you're hiding it and you don't want anybody to, you don't want to be exposed. And so you spend so much time not being exposed. You know, Dante, I just had this talk with my manager today mm. and I said, when people apologize for shit they're saying right now, they are yeah. so dumb. Yeah. Something else is going to come out. I mean, I have done the craziest shit on stage mm -hmm. and on videos and on podcasts that I can apologize. Like I right. have to just be open and out there and not be politically correct. I can't because I have too much, there's too much on me where yeah. I'll get canceled tomorrow. If I yeah. start going, you know, everyone needs to stop saying this and stop saying that I, it's, it, I can't do it. And I, yeah. I it, it's so good that you're just who you are and you're not apologizing and talking about being, I mean, I sold drugs for three years and I talk about it on every podcast. Right, I was right. a pot dealer and cocaine addict and I'm open because what am I going to be like? No, I really never did anything. And then someone be like, she fucking did coke with me for yeah. two years. Yeah. You know, and then and you're going, that's not true. And you're trying to hide it. I was yeah, like, you can't, I have had, I have a fucked up past everyone does in yeah. certain ways. So yeah. Yeah, I I they, they I think when they apologize, it's almost like you you look. I I think you got you have to be, um, you have to allow people to be allies when they want to be allies. Like you got to yes. give them an opportunity, even if they come from a, pa a negative past. You know? If it's real and they're saying it because they really feel bad that they did blackface, not just yeah. because they feel like Got they caught. should, so that they keep their fucking TV show. That's what's annoying me so yeah. much lately. Yeah. Like, do you really Forced understand apologies. what it is? Yeah. Do you understand what you did? Because if you think it's okay, just say that. It's so much yeah. better. That, like, that's what Stern did recently. Yeah. Supposedly he did blackface. It was when he had his crazy show and whatever. And he yeah. said, I'm not going to apologize. I did the craziest shit during that time. Right. I, there was no harm beyond, you know, there was nothing bad. My no soul. Malice. Was here. Right, yeah. right. No malice, and it was yeah. like, it went away in a minute. Yeah. It went away right away because he was being honest. But he also volunteered it, too. Like, he didn't right. wait until they it came. Out there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But he volunteered it. He didn't let somebody find it in the dark right. reef steps of the net. You know, yeah. he, sure. he, he yeah. went, he, he addressed it first. So I, when I started, I was, I used to do, and they would be like, oh, so you used to be a pimp. And I go, look, I'm not, it's not something I'm proud of. I'm not, it, it happened. It was, it's what it was. And I'm, 
and and progressively I'm a different person. And if you're not going to allow me, like one of the things I say, the two things that you're always going to have to do as human beings is ask for forgiveness and give forgiveness. Yes. That's, that's everybody. So yeah. if you're going to be so judgmental that you can't give it, you, you, you better have your shit together. And even if you do, I know. I I'm so, I, I, that's what's happening. It's like, it's, it's, and it's not going to work with comedy because it's really amazing. I mean, these ultra liberal people that you think are on my side, they go after me all the time. Like on Twitter, I'll post something and they're like, I, I, I feel very upset about that word. And why do you, I'm like, fuck you. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah it's, don't it's, try to silence me. It's not going to happen. That's it's, why yeah. I'm a comic. I'm not going to allow you to silence me. And it's I always situation. say, go to therapy. You yeah. have a problem with yourself. Like you need to talk about it with someone. Yeah. This has yeah. nothing to do with me. I think I, I, part of ahead. it is like, you know, th there's a reason for political correctness for sure. From a, a historical standpoint, you know, there's reasons why it exists for sure. But I think sometimes we go after the easiest stuff first and it's kind of weird. Like, why are you trying to fix comedy? Because society is broken. Like you're comp mm -hmm. I don't think you accomplish anything by taking on comedy and just leaving everything else the way it is. You, yeah. Does that make sense? Like just- if anything, it makes people want to hear us more because we're right. saying what they're thinking and being yeah. honest. Mm -hmm. well, people you like know, pe bad material. Well, pe people yeah. also, people also, I think people are lying. Like, so I one of the, we have three principles on the show is, is uh, the acronym is ACE. It's authenticity, credibility, and empathy. And I feel like if you, if you tell the truth, um, you say what you mean, you mean what you say, and then you have the, the empathy to, you have the empathy to, 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 to say like, what is this person going through? I think that kind of, those three things kind of give you the, 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 the basic foundation to kind of grow, be progressive, understand other people and still be honest and truthful without being insecure. And you find more so that people are lying because they want to be in a conversation that they don't deserve to be in. So if you're saying, if you say, oh, you know, I'm an ally of the LGBT, I'm an ally, then that allows you in the conversation. If you go, I'm homophobic and I don't, I think it's disgusting, then when we have the discussion, you don't get a say. You know, yeah. um, I, I, I don't know if you saw the, the video with the lady in, the, in Central Park with the dog. Yeah, of course. So when... I say I I keep saying this over and over again in my man in my mind I was like she's a woman who would be an ally like if 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 yeah. this didn't happen to her she would be marching Black Lives Matter yeah at the fist up. she was a liberal right and yeah. then but here's the thing when it when 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 she couldn't do what she wanted to do she un not only did she understand the white supremacy she understood how it worked in the context of her being a white it. being a white woman she knew how to use yeah. it and and if you don't if you watch the video you watch she says it's an african american so she knew the words to use because That's if so she just said this nigger is trying to yeah. you're, you're, out, you're out the game so she said yeah, african american and then when she didn't get the response she wanted she white girled it up another 10 notches so that she could get the response he, he's coming he's 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 afflicted i'm afraid for my and you like wow like so you're aware of it and if she had not gotten caught, she would have been marching Black Lives Matter. She would be there right now. I'm an ally. Absolutely. She would have been at, an, an all white for the black tra for tra trans people. Uh, you're totally right. She was That's an true. entitled. Yep. White Did you see the, the, the bow and arrow guy? Did you see yeah. the guy with the bow and arrow? Hawkeye. <laughs> Hawkeye. At, you, at you, the you, protest. You didn't see the video? Oh, no. shit. Harry, can you this, can you share the screen just through the, the sound? Let me see if I can find chainsaw? it. Hold on. So, the, it, wait, I didn't hear the chainsaw. No, a, yeah, the Mexican dude in with the chainsaw. No, I saw the one with the chainsaw, but I didn't see <laughs> I saw the chainsaw. That was fucking crazy. <laughs> that I, didn't, was I, got, I didn't even see that one. Um, oh, that Mexican was, dude pulled up to like this little section. A chainsaw. Where was a <laughs> protesters was hopped out the truck. Three and little then, people just, you know, not yeah, even... Yeah, like, he, he started threatening them. With the chainsaw. Well, like, no, was, no, he, was ag he was against it? He yes. was against Black Lives Matter and the whole thing. With he a chainsaw? Like, yeah, I mean, he a started using a chainsaw. 
<laughs> he used his gardening tools, the same shit he used to earn his money. <laughs> he used a leaf and he blower. He turned it on the brothers. <laughs> he take a leaf he blower. A leaf blower. He blow, he bl- we should have, y'all, they should, Black Lives Matter should use a leaf, leaf blower on oh, the police. He should when they threw the tear grass, he should have just blew it back at him. <laughs> He used oh, there it is. Okay, play. Watch. Well, check this out. Can you see this? Uh, holy shit! I didn't see this. What okay. is? Okay. All right. Watch. Watch. In the middle of the protest, he gets out. He shouts, "All lives matter." He's got a bow and arrow. This is the most. And he amazing. starts aiming it at people. And then he starts just aiming it in the middle of traffic, and then all of a sudden, people start beating the fuck out of him. They oh, that's so themselves. great. Let me see. <gasps> that's funny. I'll send it to you. See. I'll if send it to you later. Angle, but. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a couple of different angles of this, too. Oh, boy. Yeah. He, he gets so, the fuck beat out of him. But the best part is afterwards, after he gets the fuck beat out of him, uh, what he does is, you know, some news uh, organization gets they, a hold of him to interview him. He's like, yeah, I just uh, <laughs> minding my own business, basically. I'm minding my own everything. business. He goes, and he goes, he goes, and, and then... A, uh, no, he, he said, I shouted white lives matter. I shouted white lives matter. All, yeah, all white lives, lives matter. matter. All lives matter. Uh, and then he goes, uh, he goes, and then a black African American. And I'm a like, black no, African American. Yeah, not, 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 not a, not that's a yellow one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is, which is scary to me because here's a 67 year old dude who understands the so code funny. switch. He's, he, he understands that he, he's just not good at that's it. Fucked up. So he yeah. was like, I would have, black- let me explain something. I would have killed that man. I'm not kidding. Now, here's a crazy if thing. If a bow and arrow at me, I'd fucking kill them in front of everyone. <laughs> I would. He, it wasn't even black people that jumped him. Yeah. It was white dudes with skateboards and stuff. And then, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. After they, they took the bow and arrow and the black people helped flip his car over and set it on fire. But they didn't. Oh, I, I was late. You to send me that video. I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. But I was oh, like, wow. and he was like a black, a black African-American mulatto. Like he took all the pronouns. He just kept. Like, he said, I'm going to just. I'm going to hit it. They, and step and step, except for the one and uh, the one nigger yeah. that he no, really would have used. That it's okay, hey, right? Because he's yeah, but the that. fact that he's even aware of the the time changing and the, and the, and that he has to code switch to make himself valid is really what's the case. Because he used to have a sixty seven year old dude who would just say what he meant because he didn't know no better. Now they've even learned it's even getting more devious how they, you know, how they do it. Or it's like my, my dad was born 1920 and he was like, ah, hey, you know, he's a, he used to say fraggerine. And I'm like, what the fuck is fraggerine? <laughs> like, like he had, uh, you know, he fixes his car with a purple wrench. I'm like, I don't oh, that's know. funny. Like, my dad talked <laughs> like that too. <laughs> But you may just call it like fish or something. <laughs> I was My like little nicknames. And I, and I was like, play, your phrase your, was uh, "sugar in the blood." He got sugar in the blood. Sugar in the blood. <laughs> I yeah, thought that's diabetes. <laughs> that's diabetes. He's sweet. No? He's sweet. No, no, it was. I heard the boy's oh, sweet. sweet. I've heard the boy's before. sweet. He got sweet. sugar in the blood. Uh, it's insane. It's but crazy. the the sweet. um, you know, it's so interesting now. It's just like um, even that the 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 thing with. Like I, I had a guy who was like, oh, I'm not gonna, I don't want to, I don't know your pronouns and blah, blah, blah. So, like, cause I, like, I still work on the phone company and they are probably the, some of the dumbest, like any I blue know. collar, yeah, uh, blue construction, uh, it's kind of the dumbest white the dudes worst, ever. The wor- There's nothing worse. I'm in, I'm uh, in it. I'm on Long Island. Uh, I see it. I'm yeah. It's, there's nothing. Uh, there's uh, no, they're the dumbest people on earth. And they make good money too, which is it gives them this this, this sense of validate. Like I I get it, you don't get it, get over it. Blah, blah. So um, this dude he says um he says to me um what the fuck did he say? he said uh oh yeah you know the, you know the riots you know it's crazy it's the riots are crazy. And me just everyone I hear that a lot. And I go I go I'm I'm curious I go why aren't you rioting right. And he goes, what? And I go, yeah, why, why don't you go out and get some free shit? He goes, oh, I got to go to work in the morning. I go, exactly. You make $100,000, you got a $100,000 job. You don't, you don't have to riot. You would never, I go, so if a, if a, if a young black kid goes out and he, he's rioting, right? He, first thing he knows is that, he knows that he could get killed. 
because the, the reason why we're rioting is because a black man has been killed by police. Right. If he doesn't know he didn't could, could get killed, he knows he can be injured. And if he doesn't know that he knows he can lose his freedom by getting locked up. So the so, least you could do is get a pair of Adidas for your troubles. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, here's a little the, tax, that's all. It, Here's the thing, if you, if you understand that and you're willing to risk your life in the context of getting a Louis Vuitton belt, you really don't think that your life is worth a Louis yes. Vuitton belt. So but, where's... And, and they also always call it rioting, by the way, and not protest. They never use the word protest. They yeah. say rioting. All those people say rioting. Everywhere I was, like, I was like, what is, what, how desperate does your life have to be that you're willing to risk mm -hmm. freedom, uh, may, you know, physical health or death to get an item? You, you're, the desperation that you have to have to be willing to do that says something about your state. And then the question is, how did you get to the point where your state is so bad that you're willing to risk those things? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I it's, that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's insane. It's really it's really insane. White people riot a lot as well, which are for dumbass reasons. You know, the, uh, some sports team lost. That's even You're worse, right. though. Whole riot go down. Yeah, that's even worse. You maybe you celebrate one whole riot go down. Yeah, you can't. You can't <laughs> like, it don't even matter win. if they lose. Like, I don't know. And then they just well, riot anyway. You know, Philly they were greasing the telephone poles. Yeah, and, they, and the dude ate the horse shit. Yeah, after a win. After the win, it's like <laughs> you like yo but, dog. But I, you show yeah, footage of black people taking a Forget TV, and you're like, "This is nuts! Car. This is crazy! This, this is how could this?" Oh, the guy who ate shit, that who ate shit, dog shit, wasn't that wasn't crazy? That wasn't crazy. The fact that you got to grease telephone poles so dudes don't electrocute themselves on telephone it, that. That's it's just so insane. Happening. What the fuck is happening? Seriously, I think it's going to be a huge breakthrough after this, but it's going to take a while. I don't think we've seen the worst, and I'm not being negative. I'm being realistic. No, I no. Think that this is a bottom, like with an attic. This is the the fucking bottom, and it hasn't been hit yet. This is just my personal opinion. But I, what really is hard for me is all these people. Like, I can't believe what's going on. I can't believe the way black people. I'm like. Where have you been? I mean, yeah. not that I've done anything about it. I'm going to be honest. I've always been yeah. like an ally, but I haven't done anything. I haven't marched or done any protesting or whatever, but I've seen it my whole life. I yeah. said this. I mean, I've been on the road with people like Alonzo. I've hung out with Yamani. I've been with so many people yeah. and I see the looks. I see it. You have to just open your eyes. It's everywhere, constantly. And yeah. I'm, I, I just can't even believe there's most people now are just like, we have to start because it's the cool thing to do. I know it is the cool thing to do. Yeah. I know that a lot of people mean it and they're trying to help and they're distraught, but there are a lot of people like you see those pe women who are taking pictures at like barring oh, someone's yeah. line. I can't. I it's can't like even, a post. Oh yeah. my God. There's always going to be that. But for the most part, it's, it's pretty moment. incredible. It's a pretty incredible time because you look it at is? those marches and it's not the difference between now and 1968 is that it's not just black people marching. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of, of people yeah. of all different colors supporting it. So that's that's a huge massive and also change. Social it's, media is like yeah. it's you could pour gasoline on. It's blowing up because of that. Thank God. Yeah. That is true. Videos the and ability to that yo, the camera. That cell phone. Camera. Somebody, somebody said that we yeah. that black people should honor the cell phone camera in next uh uh <laughs> next February. <laughs> So fucking, black History here's what Month. we need to do. All the all them statues we ripping down should be replaced with an iPhone camera statue or some shit. <laughs> yeah. That's what we need to have a monument of. A motherfucking <laughs> Samsung, nigga. Like, yeah. we <laughs> owe so much justice to camera phones. Yeah, I it's, thought about it the other day. I, I when it was going into a gas station and there were two white men went in before me without a mask on mm. on Long Island into this little store. And I was like, you know what? let me grab my camera. Mm -hmm. And I went back in the car and got my camera. Cause I was yeah. like, if it goes down, <laughs> I need to record this. Yeah. 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 It's, it's crazy. I can see it and feel that's, it. That's the thing you got to think about. It's funny. A friend of mine, um, he just called me this morning. He's in Indiana. Right. And he was driving by. He goes, Oh shit. I'm seeing two cops. Uh, there's two cops arresting a dude. And I go, where are they? He goes, 
Oh, uh, they're all white. Never mind. I'm going to keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> Let me not waste my phone yeah, battery. <laughs> not even bother. He goes, I'm going to keep it moving. I'm on 13%. This is not yeah. worth it. <laughs> and he's a white dude, too. He's like, ah, there's no need for me to get he'll him He'll be fine. This. Yeah, he'll be fine. Yeah, they'll be all right. Oh, but I've done it. I've, I've literally, I've, I've filmed in my apartment. I lived in a basement apartment, and the cops pulled the kid over, and I immediately took my phone and put it on the windowsill and started filming then pull this kid over. And he did, I swear, he did shout, don't shoot me. I don't want to get shot. Oh, that's so upset. My heart, it, I can't even. It it turned out to be okay. Not, I mean, they arrested him. I don't know how, but I stayed up filming it because I should have gone to sleep. But I stayed there filming because if some shit went down, I wanted to at least, I don't know, it's something that is in my head. I wanted to document it. I uh, well, well, two days, two, two days after they buried Floyd, they killed that kid in the Wendy's parking lot. Yeah. yeah. So you, yeah, I mean, and what about the people that got, you know, were before during that, the protest? That, the, not during the well, right? At, like, I mean, he was at, at the Wendy's and they shot him in the back of the Wendy's. No, no, no. Yeah, I was yeah, saying that there was conversation. Yeah. Yeah. There was a, there were other instances. Uh, oh yeah. Incidences. There's more. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. There's more stuff going on. So when people say, you know, uh, like I, I even and this dude is one of my frat brothers. He was like, oh, you know, cops are taking a knee. And I go, I, I don't give a fuck if you're taking a knee. Did, did somebody got killed the next day after the captain of the new NYPD. They killed the dude the next day because there's no consequence. They're starting to be consequence. They're losing their job. But when you can put well, I forget what they call it when you um when you can't uh you can't uh prosecute a police officer because uh in, in I'll the look context it up. Of, I know what you're talking about it's called, um, police immunity police uh, it's not is it no it's not isn't it some qualified immunity qualified immunity, qualified, Im qualified immunity. Okay. so yeah it means that they're because they're in the in the in the act of doing their job and policing that you can't you can't so if they fuck up you can't you, you they can't prosecute them so uh, you you did. And they were supposed to vote on that at the Supreme Court yesterday and they pushed it back. They won't reexamine it. They won't even reexamine it because it's because you got a conservative Supreme Court justice. You have Trump put all these all these, you know, he put a rapist in. He wins again. It's that word. The next I don't, judge, forget I don't it. think he is. I don't I think don't he either. is. I, I don't think so because I, and I've said me and Harry have been arguing about this for like three years now because he yeah. really can't stop. So no matter what you think is the he's bottom. done today. <laughs> like, oh, okay. He's going to fuck it up even he further. Can't, oh, it's going like, to get bad. They oh, are. Yeah. If you wait till we get popcorn. Yeah. And just sit back because there is so much shit that's going to come out about him. Right now, he's got five months. He's got five more months. He has so, a shitload of Republicans out to get him, and they have dirt. I'm telling you, they have been waiting for this for four years, like however long they've been waiting for the next election. But they're, you, they're, you, you literally have the dumbing. There's the dumbing down of America, <laughs> and so we are, he's in. Even he said, "I love my uneducated people." It's like yeah. so sick. That's it's, it's, wild. Yeah. Can I? Before we wrap up, I wanted to get into something. Ask Jessica something. Did you did was there any blowback from you coming out and or officially, I guess, as far as doing comedy that talk more about your personal life and your kids and everything? No, well, I mean there were some dumb bookers on the road who were like, "Well, I need to put on a gay show." I'm like, "What are you talking?" I literally literally talk about it for five minutes, if that. Right. Mm -hmm. It's so not a part of what I talk about. Right, um, right. So, but most people don't. No, they, they don't, don't care. Now I'm not even, now it's not even an issue with everything happening. I mean, the world is blowing yeah. up. I'm yeah. not concerned about it now. Um, and I have so many guys on my side, you know, comics who try yeah, to yeah. me and are so good to me. I, I, I don't worry about it now. I mean, I'm very worried about when we're going to perform and where and what is going yeah. on. I am dying to get on stage, but I am not dying to go yeah. into an airport and to another city and... It's have you have fun. you done any of the Zoom shit or no? Yeah. How do you? I I just I tried doing the Zoom shit and I was like, this is not comedy. I literally said to Harry, if 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 comedy is Zooming, then yeah. I'm not a I'm not a comic. Yeah, anymore. same thing. What I do is I'll either do a Q and A where I give them questions and it's a conversation, and that I can do where they kind of lead me into my bits. That yeah. that works really well. 
Yeah. They okay. know the material beforehand and I send yeah. them questions. Yeah. Um, you know, they'll be like, so your mother's a therapist, you know, and I'll start doing some bits about her. <laughs> right, right. Okay. I, I, I'll do it if I can do crowd work with the pictures. Yeah. On yeah. Zoom. Like that yeah. I love doing. I'll be like, Dave, why are you, why are your shorts so short? You know, like it's a stereo. Right, right. Yeah, you can play. People. Oh, yeah. But to just do my set, I yeah. won't, I'll never do that if you pay me. Yeah, it's so it's like because what you're talking about is pod the podcasting or like yeah. I, I said to Harry, even when we you know, when you look at the, I don't know if you've seen the old episodes of the green room. Um you do the, okay, so yeah. you know what's interesting about that is because it's that is kind of like uh impractical jokers because they get to see us. They, it's almost like they're getting to, it's almost like the fourth wall is up and they get to see us with each other. Like yeah. the, the, how we are, and they're kind of watching it like a sitcom, us being us amongst us. And we don't really care what they think, but they get to view it as from, from a spectator's position, like you yeah. know, which is, which is funny. I mean, that was really good. I mean, but yeah. Then when you look at like the, the the Byron Allen thing where you know they would go so you're uh, you're yeah. like ugh. So I never thing. met you, but I heard you like feta cheese. I did yeah, that like, <laughs> twice. It was horrible, <laughs> horrible. One of the worst segues. Like, one of the worst segues was a uh, so John. I hear you're getting older. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, we got we got we, we running out of time, but I wanted to talk to you because you know I got a little baby, and and you got twins, right? Yeah. You got twin babies, yeah. and I wanna I'm bragging and like because three year old too, right? Yeah, or yeah. Four, I, I, oh, I have two baby mamas. I'm ah. like I, I'm a Jewish <laughs> jabber. I'm a jabber. You are. <laughs> when yeah. your mixtape coming out? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so Young Kirsten, <laughs> fire on the yep. streets. I have a 13-year-old with my ex who doesn't live with me. And uh, then I have a, a four-and-a-half-year-old and twin one-year-old. And they're all girls. You are all straight oh pimping all day. No. I thought I was I'm a very pimp. much like that. I, <laughs> I, I want to hear your story. We got to talk. Yeah, I, whatever. Let's do it. I, um, here's a crazy thing. I just put my, my beautiful son up. Um, he's so oh, beautiful. Dante. It work. I did. I mean, come on. Let's be honest. I do everything perfect, but um, <laughs> but they um the uh, he's he's potty um trained. He's potty trained already. Really? He's only temp so this what? is what I wanted to tell. So here's what happened. This is this is interesting. So you know how like no like cats shit in a box and d no animal wants to be um doesn't want to shit on themselves, right? But when you put them in pampers, you teach them to shit on themselves, basically, yeah. right? But and then when you potty train them after you've treat you've teach you've taught them to 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 shit on themselves, then you you begin to you gotta break them from the thing that you let them you taught them to do in the first place, right? Yeah. Um. And so there's this new thing called the the top hat. Right, it looks like it looks like a top hat, right? But it's a potty, and so my wife sits it in between her legs, like a like a hat, like if you sat it, and it just sits him on it. So you know when you got little kids, you know when they're gonna shit because they start, you know, they shoot up the pamper, they're like, and they and then they and they and they, and they, and they, and, and they yeah. make a face, and then they yeah. grunt like he he'll go, mm, yeah. right? Yeah. And so you just put him on the and he. He's. We haven't had. We haven't haven't. We haven't used the pamper in two weeks. That's a. Uh, that's unreal. Is I'm that crazy? That's crazy. That's I, crazy to me. I thought my wife was crazy when she brought it up, but I was like, look, I'm I'm running around the street working and stuff. You got to deal. So if you think yeah. this is gonna work, it's gonna work. And she told. I bought the. I bought the top hat and she and now and then mm -hmm. the. E, she, I sat him on the thing. I sat him, put it between my I sat on the thing, right? And I looked in it, and it was like a huge, like a, I thought a truck driver snuck in and shit it in there. A <laughs> working the, man? You thought a, like a, a nigga with high ass. blood pressure took a shit. It was a, a dude that eats a lot of cheese. Yeah, so, a lot of provolone. 
<laughs> yo, I was like, yo, where did this? I, and I went, I went and took a shit, and I was like, I felt a little emasculated because I was yeah. like, yo, he, he got me beat. Like he got me beat. <laughs> he has a lot oh, of teeth. Wow. Yeah, he, he has, has a lot of teeth. Yeah, for ten months. But yeah, so check. I'll I'll send you that too, Jess. I th- let me you know before you go. Let me get make sure I got your numbers and everything. You um, I think yeah. Okay. But, uh, um, but I'll send you the thing on the top hat because, uh, I mean, it worked for us. You know. Yeah. So no, that's you know, incredible. I mean, if you can do that, in two it makes years, sense too, though. You know what yeah, I mean? It, it just makes yeah. sense because they know they you know, especially if you're you know, plus you you run in the streets, got your pimp game up. You know what I mean? Yeah. You you know, <laughs> I'm not a stay. I'm this is very hard. I was not planning on being a stay at home mom. Yeah, this was not the deal. This was not the. Yeah. <laughs> no, Thanks. I'm being. I'm very. You know, it's funny because someone said recently, like, how would you think your kids would feel if you said? I said, I don't give a shit. I'm being honest. I did not. Yeah want to be home 24 seven with my kids. Isn't that is always part of this, the deal. Like I'll do this, but no, I'm going to be on the road a lot or not home a lot. Right. So, so what is that? Had it in your mind to not yeah. be here. Yeah. That's the yeah. truth. What is that's it like now that you've had, son. what is it like now that you've had to do that though? Now it's very that you're challenging. I love it. I love being with them, but it's, it's, it's hard. I'm adjusting. It's 20 years of doing something. And then all of a sudden, and I, I get anxious, like all the screaming and the noise and the, yeah, it's a lot. Look and comedy was kind of like a release. You could like talk about your issues and get yeah. like a you, instant Andre, feedback. And that is the biggest, that's the hardest thing for me. Yeah, it was like therapy. Yo. It you was go up there and just major therapy. About your yeah. Yeah. yeah, you get the break and you get the break because you're out doing comedy and, and, you know, you come back fresh and you could be yeah. the, then you could be the fun one, you know, right. <laughs> you could be the- I come <laughs> on with a gift and go and that's you know, <laughs> all, also with going out to do comedy, you get to be around like fucking funny people. Yes. Yeah. So that's you finally on. get to laugh yeah. like somebody makes you laugh. Yeah, you at home with all these unfunny motherfuckers. They whack. They jokes be dry. I'm tired of hearing these shitty ass stories. I did a. I'm I in know a, I'm, I am too. I'm. I'm, a, a, I'm in a fraternity, right? And I had a. Um, so they have like my my fraternity is on Mega Sci Fi, and we had a Zoom call with the chapter, right? Like, <laughs> so it's like twenty one dudes on a Zoom call, right? Yeah. And, and they really think they're interesting and funny. And I was like, and they were like, oh, yeah, you want to go? Let's go. And I'm like, yeah, no. like you're going to use, you're going to use this on your, in your, in your sketch. Like, I wouldn't do this at an open sketch. mic. Shut up. Yeah. I was like, no, I was like, none of y'all, I got to know y'all think you're funny. You're not, Ugh. you're not interesting. You're not funny. I go, you don't understand who I hang out with every day. The, the people I hang out with are funny and I'm funnier than most of them. I said it, and, <laughs> I said and, I go, and you, you, you think that I give a fuck about, and I spent two hours just roasting them. I That's roasted crazy. 21 dudes, and for two hours straight, just like, oh, just cutting, a couple of them uh-huh. left, a couple of them got mad, they got, they were like, fuck, I'm leaving the meeting, I was like, best, best time ever. I'm yes. a meeting. <laughs> I've ruined my girl for her for at work. Like, there's no more. Yeah. She can't handle people's like unfunny bits. Working hard, hardly yeah. working, and <laughs> because it's so it's it's it kills our soul. It's so yeah. hard. That uh, cliche so bullshit. Especially yeah. with what's going on. That how you doing? You know, it's like no people are dying every. Yeah. What the fuck up? Bah, 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 bah. I, I like they. I would be like really low key on the job, and they would uh, they would come to me and they go, uh, "Hey, who's the new guy?" Right? And I go, "I, I was like, I'm, I said, I, I told this guy, I was like, I've known you twenty years. I go, how many times have you done that joke? Uh, let's be honest. How many times has a guy gone out sick or in an operation? <laughs> and you've done that joke, and he." He goes, oh, what, what, what the fuck you mean? What do you mean? I go, I go, do you understand that your friends don't like you? That <laughs> nobody thinks you're funny? I go, do you yeah. have any idea that people talk about you and how dumb you are? Every day, anytime I mention your name, they say how dumb you are. And you do this joke 
every time I've, I've seen you do it several times with different people and I go, it never gets a laugh. I go, I'm just curious. Did you even notice that it never gets a laugh that you no, say it? No, you don't notice. You know, I go, I go, stop, just stop. Just you're dumb. You're so dumb. <laughs> I say that to people all the time. You know, they think if someone sneezes, they're killing. Like they're really. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> it's very low bar. Yeah. Oh, yes. Shit. <sighs> and nobody likes you. I go, and I'm like, you see, you, your partner, because they ride two in the truck. I go, you know how many times he told me he doesn't like you? Oh, that he needs. Oh, oh you Jesus. snitching? <laughs> oh, I snitch on everything. I go, you know how many times he told me how you, much you he gave hates him a, work? You he gave him hates working with you. The Steve Martin from Planes, oh, yeah. Trains, and Automobiles. Oh, I, yeah. nobody you likes you. Him right down. Nobody thinks you're funny. I it's go, like a you, you, a you don't shower. You smell. Nobody uh. tells you. I go, but I'm telling you, you're awful. You're awful. And I, I can't. I'm, I go, 20 years I've been trying to be nice. and I go, I'm not. Just don't ever talk to me again. You're an awful human being. You're a really <laughs> awful human being. What did he say? He just looked at me like, oh, 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 oh. he's an Italian dude. It. He's an Italian dude who orders in Italian hey. at a, at, wait, orders Italian, in Italian, at, at, a pizza, at a pizza parlor, two Mexicans. Right. That's what he does. <laughs> That's That's perfect. He probably said, hey, who pissed in your Cheerios or something like that. It didn't register. I'm who pissed in Cheerios? I go, I go, if you do another joke, I'm going to fight you. I'm gonna fight you. We're gonna we're gonna have to fight. Jessica, thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate you. I, I know it was a lot Thanks going on. You know I love you to death. I love you to absolute you death. You and, know uh, I love you. I know you do. I, I yeah. you guys are great and it's all gonna be better in a year or two. It's gonna be oh, fun. I think I so. so. I think so. I mean we made it past the Spanish flu, so I mean well we didn't. Right? But my <laughs> but my grandma my grandma did. <laughs> <laughs> and if not, we'll be dead. You won't have to worry. It's, it's no, it's no big thing. You can't. You have nothing to talk about. So, thank you so much. Please plug your there's anything you got coming up, social media, anything, whatever you're doing. I don't know. Yeah, I'm on Instagram at Jesse Curson, and I have a website, JessicaCurson.com, and I have a podcast, Relatively Sane, um, that I put What's out. What's the format? What's the format of the podcast? You know, it's interesting you just said that. So it's been me interviewing different comics every week. And I've been feel like I've just been like kind of just interviewing people just because that's what I'm doing is interviewing people. And it, it hasn't been really, it's been down, you know, especially mm -hmm. this going on. It's like every comic's like, oh, when do you think we're going to be able to perform? I mean, it's every conversation. So I may just start doing my own thing for yeah. a while mm. and just talking because I need to vent. Yeah. I'd love to oh, do it yeah. with you too. If you, if oh, you, anytime, Dante. No, I'm still gonna have people, but it's like I don't want to just have guests yeah. just to have guests. Like I know that's not why I want a podcast. So, well, yeah, because it, you know we yeah. we care about the 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 comedy interviews, but I've always you know one of the, the formats. I think one of the things about uh you know the, our podcast is that there's so much more to people than just the stand up. And so I like to kind of delve into, you want to get to know people behind that. It's not really about the comedy as much as it, you know, like, who are you? And that's, that's really the higher level of comedy. Anyway, it's like, I, yeah. I, I want to say I was so happy to see when you started talking about, you know, about being a lesbian and doing this stuff. And you just like bashing them and like, that's right. I'm a carpet muncher. And you're like, just, and just going and just, it was just good to see you, you know, just the honesty of that. And I could feel it's not, right. Cause I didn't do it and I will never do it in a political way. Like no, no. shoving yeah. it down people's throats. I more try to explain things. It's like when guys ask if we scissor, Right. I mean, okay, I've got, you know, my whole life I got asked that when my first girlfriend, you guys scissor, it's fucking hot. Do you scissor? Huh. I'm like, scissor? Like, I can barely, <laughs> I don't even lift my leg. <laughs> I'm scissoring. And it's more like just teaching people, like you said, like people are just dumb. Yeah. And they yeah. don't know. I, I was talking to um, Shante Wayans yeah. and, uh, and I, I was like, you know, she 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 said, yeah, you know, every time I break up with a girl, she says, I got to get a new dildo. I got to get a new strap on. And I'm like, 
that's not fair. Like, I don't have to, yeah. like, I just wash it off and stick it in somebody new. You got to put, she, and she was like, it's, it's, it's expensive. Like, she was like, the, very expensive. The, the yeah. dildo, the shorts, the, 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 the like, Rack, the whole thing. And so I, I said, listen, what you should do is when you get the new dildo, save the plastic and the twist ties, right? And the and the little circular tape, you know, the circular tape, yeah. so you can save that, throw it in the dishwasher, boom, boom, wrap it back up. <laughs> You're right. You really just have to throw it in the dishwasher. They're mostly dishwasher safe now. <laughs> dishwasher safe. Dishwasher. Expensive shit. Expensive. Sometimes it funny. doesn't fit in there. Like the one that I have, it's a baseball bat. It doesn't really fit. <laughs> you can't bend it. Can you bend it? You should bend it. Bend it and twist tie it together. Harry, you got twist ties on you, right? Huh? I got twist you ties, fucking zip dirt ties, bag. Sure. <laughs> you dirt bag. Yeah, um, but I don't have any dildos in the back, so I don't know what you're talking about. It's a whole different. This my, really? my bag of tools is a whole different thing. Really? Uh -huh. You got no you got no dildos? None? In no, the back? Not, None? That's not true. That's not in I here. Know no it I know you don't. I know you piece <laughs> of shit. And I just want to tell you, you know, Hitachi Magic One, they make a wireless now. They make a cordless. <gasps> you know yeah, in my day. <laughs> that is the best vibrator. <laughs> Hitachi in the makes one though, Dante? Yeah. Like Hitachi yeah. Magic One. Yeah, you never oh, heard wow. me. You been on how long I, you been I on the podcast? You plug it into the wall. They it's got a, a wireless water. that's stronger than the plug-in. Oh boy, the technology. My God, my, my, that can't be a good thing. Don't buzz your pussy off. It's yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> I'm gonna burn my. I'm gonna fire. <laughs> <laughs> you break your hip. You can break your hip with that thing. <laughs> that's um, the engine the fucking house. A, <laughs> a small Toyota. Yeah, they do it cordless. <laughs> just they, they got a, a lithium one. battery in it now. That thing yeah, is yeah, nothing. Who are you talking about, Andre? You talking about Andre or no? Yeah, Andre, have you ever? No, no, I haven't. Well, it's I've so seen powerful. It, it's crazy. It's crazy. You could sand at the house. I'm going to say, well, I, I bought one for Marina when she broke up with her boyfriend because I'm the best friend ever. That's and uh, cool. and two, two, at 2 o'clock in the morning, she calls me up. Lisa giggling, right? Because she she says she got out the shower, she put it on her, and her legs gave out, and she fell on the ba bathroom floor. Damn. And she she called me up, and she said, Dante, I'm laying on the floor. I had to call you. This is the first birthday, first birthday uh, gift ever. Almost yeah. killed Marina. <laughs> she could have hit her head on the on the tub. Yo. Yeah, Just but thank you. Been your fault. I know. Just thank you. I love you thank so much. You. Love you guys. Um, Harry, uh, Andre, good. Say yeah, what uh, else? Yeah, Andre D. Thompson on everything uh, podcast between spots uh, on everything. Hit me up. Uh, Harry, talk to me. Uh, you could uh, find all my social media at Harry Turjanian and also uh, check out Catalyst Wrestling. I do the color commentary and new episodes every week on YouTube. So check it out. And also check out the YouTube page for this if you're the pot one of the podcast listeners listening to the audio. Uh, we have videos and clips going up all the time on the Man School 202 YouTube page. So definitely check that out. And whatever happens, yeah. that's where it's going down. Yeah, everything for me. Instagram is the Dante Nero. Um, everything else is Dante Nero, Facebook and Twitter. Um, don't forget the uh, the website, DanteNero.com. If you want to book some time, some consultations with me, go to DanteNero.com. Click on consult and you can book time with me. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. I'm excited. I appreciate it. If you like what we're doing, tell somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody. We are out. Thanks, Jess. I love you. Thank you. Love you, too.